We are the Alfred Gessler Rotocraft Center team, and we are here to present our solution to the First Responder UAS Endurance Challenge, a quad rotor biplane tail sitter for first responders. The First Responder UAS Endurance Challenge, sponsored by NIST, is a unique challenge to design, build, and demonstrate a VTOL unmanned aerial system capable of carrying a 10-pound LTE communications payload for as long as possible in support of first responders in remote areas. To start us off, the Alfred Gessler Rotocraft Center is affiliated with the University of Maryland and specializes in advanced rotocraft systems. Our team consists of graduate students of rotocraft working under the advisory of Dr. Indrajit Chopra. My name is Nicholas Reem and I am the team leader of the AGRC team. Brandon Phillips is the systems integration lead, Abhishek Shastri, the rotor and propulsion lead, Anamesh Shastri, the avionics lead, and Peter Rysek, the simulation lead. For technical concerns or questions, you can contact me directly with my information here, and all other requests can be directed to our advisor, Dr. Chopra. We would like to first highlight some of the key features of our quad rotor biplane design solution. In terms of setup time, we have estimated full deployment of the system in 12 minutes, well under the maximum requirement. Three core vehicle components assembled at the field enable this short setup time, as well as a low total system volume of only 42 cubic feet. The total system weight, including the vehicle, payload, ground station equipment, and storage case is estimated at 110 pounds, and the gross takeoff weight is 40 pounds. An in-house developed avionics package allows for level three autonomous flight. This level of autonomy was decided to enhance user experience and decrease endurance penalty from having additional avionics on board. The cost of the full system is well within the $30,000 budget, and we estimate an endurance of 114 minutes in loitering forward flight. What sets this design aside is that this competitive endurance is achieved with only onboard LiPo battery power. We have opted for an efficiently designed VTOL transition airframe, enabling battery power to compete with alternative energy sources for VTOL endurance. The Qubit FR takes off vertically like a multi-rotor, transitions into efficient forward flight, and returns to hover for vertical landing, all in a compact and simple airframe. We have optimized the rotors for our desired flight conditions in conjunction with an in-house variable pitch hub. The airframe is a carbon fiber composite shell with internal plywood structure. Elevons allow for redundant control in forward flight or gliding capability in the event that rotor control is lost. A commercially sourced RTK GPS system gives reliable location data at centimeter accuracy for autonomous navigation. A small digital HD camera and custom gimbal assembly is mounted on the underside of the fuselage, which is streamed to the ground station for viewing. The payload is mounted to a structural plywood rib inside the fuselage fairing to reduce drag, but has an unobstructed view of the ground when in forward flight. Our in-house avionics package handles all onboard computation for stabilization, decision making, and sensor integration, which includes a downward facing sensor suite for precision takeoff and landing. Finally, the main propulsion battery allowing for our high endurance is a 16,000 milliamp hour 12 cell LiPo battery. Our system storage case houses the vehicle fuselage assembly, which is the heaviest single component with pre-installed flight battery and payload. It also includes both wing assemblies, a ground station generator, RF communications tripod, and ground station box. The box houses smaller ground station equipment such as the laptop, battery charger, and FPV video monitor. The red border signifies the maximum volume allowed, which we have reduced by more than 41%. The case features a lightweight construction method to reduce the total system weight to 110 pounds. The three core vehicle components enable the low system volume and fast system setup time. Here we will be breaking down the full system starting with the ground station. Power is supplied by a 1000 watt generator to guarantee long duration power in remote areas. A ground station laptop interfaces with the necessary communications equipment including pilot transmitter, flight termination system transmitter, telemetry transceiver, and RTK GPS system. A separate LCD display and video receiver is used to display onboard video. The flight controller subsystem consists of a Teensy 4.0 microcontroller and IMU, which receives wireless data directly from the safety pilot transmitter. Madrick filtering of the IMU data gives reliable vehicle orientation estimate. The flight controller interfaces with an autonomy suite over a serial connection. The Raspberry Pi 4 flight computer interfaces with all of the onboard sensing, including current and voltage sensors for the motors, a landing camera, landing altitude sensor, airspeed sensor, and GPS unit. The flight computer makes use of filter fusion for vehicle location estimation, separate from the flight controller, which is used solely for attitude stabilization. Two-way telemetry is established with the ground station through an XP Pro transceiver module. 
The flight termination system operates independently of all other avionics and acts in line between the propulsion battery and power system. 60 amp ESCs commanded by the flight controller provide power to the four motors. Additionally, the flight controller commands four collective pitch servos and four elevon servos. A digital HD video system transmits gibble stabilized video feed to the ground station. The flight termination system is powered by an independent battery sized for the maximum flight time of the vehicle. Similarly, all avionics receive power from an independent avionics battery to isolate them from voltage spikes that are present on the main propulsion battery. We have provided some of the key performance parameters for endurance here. We estimate roughly 316 watts of power consumed during cruise and 1,848 watts consumed during takeoff and landing. Peak current that the battery should experience is 38.5 amps during hover, though the size 16,000 mAh 12 cell LiPo is capable of much higher current draw. With this battery, we estimate 1.89 hours of endurance at a loiter radius of 300 feet. We use a unique endurance model to arrive at these parameters, starting with aerodynamic optimization of the airframe in forward cruise. A combination of vortex lattice method and viscous solvers estimate parasitic cruise power. We then design an optimal rotor with high figure of merit and propeller efficiency in conjunction with manufacturer motor operating data. Estimated power requirements then inform appropriate battery selection to arrive at the final estimated endurance. Because the avionics and flight termination system use separate batteries from the main propulsion system, their power requirements are computed separately using manufacturer component power draw data. The selected motors are the T-Motor U82 150 kV brushless DC motors, which have an operating efficiency of 90% at the cruise RPM and 87% at the hover RPM. 60 amp flame high voltage ESCs ensure reliable operation of the motors without excessive heating. A cost effective battery solution with the required capacity is selected to power the rotors. A key differentiator of our power system is our in-house collective pitch hub assembly that allows for highly efficient operation of the rotor in both hover and cruise conditions. This assembly is fully 3D printed with carbon reinforced polycarbonate material. The four rotors are designed to maximize overall endurance of the vehicle. By varying collective and RPM between cruise and hover, optimal performance can be achieved in all flight regimes of a transition VTOL vehicle such as Qubit FR. A high figure merit in hover as well as a high propeller efficiency in forward flight are achieved through careful design informed by blade element momentum theory. Here we see the power requirements in forward cruise as a function of designed blade twist, which has been minimized. A linear blade twist of negative 43 degrees reduces power required per rotor to 71 watts in cruise. Because the vehicle will operate in both hover and cruise regimes, a rotor can only be optimized for one unless variable collective and RPM is used. The trade-off for a fixed pitch rotor can be seen here as power requirements in each flight regime have inverse power trends. To reduce power requirements across all flight modes, variable collective and RPM setting is selected with careful attention to prevent blade stall. Our in-house flight controller and autonomy package handles all onboard computation for level three autonomy. The sensor suite consists of a LiDAR Light V3, which is used for landing altitude sensing, a 1080p landing target tracking camera, a HERE Plus RTK GPS module for navigation and localization, and a Holybro digital airspeed sensor to maintain proper forward cruise velocity. Sensor data is processed on a Raspberry Pi 4 flight computer running robot operating system. Autonomous takeoff and landing is possible solely with RTK GPS data, but the additional sensors give redundant localization through filter fusion, where bad data from any of the sensors can be rejected. The flight computer's outer loop controller generates vehicle state commands for the inner loop Teensy flight controller. Here, actuator outputs for the motor and servo actuators are commanded to stabilize the vehicle. Additionally, a gimbaled HD FPV camera mounted on the nose of the vehicle provides live video to the ground station. When the pilot transmitter is not in manual operation modes, it may be used to control the gimbal. There are four primary radio links on board, the pilot controller, telemetry up and down link, flight termination system, and digital HD video feed. All operate on legal and reliable frequencies, and critical systems operate with frequency hopping spread spectrum technology to reject interference. FCC compliant transmission power levels provide more than adequate range for the purposes of this vehicle, which will primarily operate within visual line of sight. The pilot transmitter is used to send direct vehicle override commands or gi camera gimbal commands. The telemetry system sends high-level autonomy commands to the vehicle from the ground station and receives vehicle status information in return. 
the flight termination system issues the kill command to the main vehicle propulsion battery. Finally, the digital video feed provides real-time 720p video stream to the ground station. Main vehicle design has been completed in preparation of this preliminary design review. Parts procurement and updates to the vehicle airframe is currently underway. The next major milestone is the critical design review at the beginning of October, which demands an aggressive schedule to provide sufficient progress toward completion of this challenge. Manufacturing efforts will begin mid-August. Battery, motor, and rotor testing will begin in late August, with a completion deadline set at September 18th to ensure sufficient time for CDR preparation. Through CDR into October, avionics integration into the completed airframe will be conducted with hopes of early flight testing in late October. This timeline should provide adequate opportunity to evaluate project challenges ahead of future deadlines in December. The top risk that the team faces is ongoing challenges from the COVID-19 pandemic impacting operations at the University of Maryland. We are currently operating with research restrictions and difficulty securing on-campus lab space to work could delay manufacturing. To mitigate this, we will consider expanding the manufacturing team or sourcing a private lab space external to campus to stay on schedule. Another risk we face is inaccurate manufacturer motor or battery data discovered after our testing in late August. In response, the vehicle structure can be tested to identify structurally redundant areas to reduce weight and bring our endurance target back up. We may also implement a new rotor design should the need arise. Rotor testing will identify if our collective pitch hub assembly is capable of operating at our desired loading cases. If it does not meet requirements, testing may be delayed ahead of CDR. In response, we will need to quickly shift our manufacturing method to machined aluminum or source a comparable commercial product. Finally, looking out into the future, an anomaly while flight testing can damage critical hardware. To mitigate this, duplicate parts should be manufactured or ordered whenever possible. Additionally, highly experimental hardware or software may be tested on our 20-pound risk reduction vehicle at the Alfred Gesso Rotocraft Center rather than our competition vehicle. This concludes our preliminary design review of the Qubit FR, the all-electric, high-endurance VTOL solution. Thank you.